Hello and welcome to the Stephen Trice podcast, episode 16. Uh, today I'm joined by David Reese. Oi, oi. Max Smith. Hello there. Thomas Cooney. Hi. And Joe McGrath standing, Tom McGrath, who uh, is his <laughs> probation officer. <laughs> Slash. Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> this week we're doing the follow up to the Smash It Conspiracy <laughs> podcast. Follow up? Uh, yeah, part two. <laughs> part two. So, Dave. Yes. You're in a new flat. How's it treating yeah. you? Yeah, lovely. Um, well, we're luckily, we're right outside the Amazon rainforest as well. So, <laughs> just just go for a jog anytime I want. That is lucky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's doing all right. I've, I've become a housewife. Um, where, where my job's not open at the minute, and Jenna's is, uh, yeah. I've like been going around hoovering up, dusting the walls, uh, making sure everything's tidy. I've even done dinner, funny enough. Um, not. And that's a wife's no. job, is it, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. <laughs> right, right. You, you t- no, right. <laughs> I made this look really bad now. I didn't mean it. Like that. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. You, you'd have gotten away with it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn it. Damn it. Um, I was so close. I'm, but I'm I've been doing to the bins. What you made for dinner. Uh, jacket potatoes. I said I'll I'll, uh, I'll do St. hard. I'll uh, mix it up a bit. More in the middle. <laughs> Room <Room-tab. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> British chicken. When she come back, she had to redo them. <laughs> that lucky, yeah. lucky lady. After a long oh. day at work. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> After a nine-hour shift, she was like, "Just what I wanted. A nice uh, cold jacket potato." Max. Hello. What have you been up to? Anything wild? Nope. Um, Tom, you're with us. Uh, <laughs> you know, anything... I'm so done with uh, this lockdown now. I've not Gosh. worked for like, four months. Um, my All the things I was doing to pass the time have kind of tailed off. I'm not exercising as much, getting a bit fat. Um, <laughs> Comments have said that. Yeah. yeah uh, Welcome to my world, Tom. <laughs> wow. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody to deflect the comments from me. <laughs> Can one of you develop a crap laugh? And it's... <laughs> so yeah, it's been a bit, uh, been a bit grim. Went out for a nice walk in the storm yesterday. That was oh nice. I felt alive for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to get hit by the storm? Uh, thunder? You know what I mean. Lightning. My mates, um, my mate posted on the WhatsApp group that uh, lightning had hit the house next door. And his, one of his plugs had just flown out of the socket. <laughs> and then he sent us a picture of a house on the street just billowing with smoke. So, Jesus oh, Christ. Yeah, you know, it's quite, Mother it's quite dangerous. That's it. What about you, Stephen? I went, I went out in, the, in Thunder and Lightning yesterday. Uh, of course, Thunder and Lightning with the name of a guinea pig. So um, <laughs> it's, it's the second time I've been in Thunder and Lightning. Um, <laughs> no, Dave. Come come out well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was, I was walking. I, enjoyed that. I was walking to the train station, um, and it seemed to be the lightning seemed to be behind the train station. So we went round the side, but there's also an entrance to the station. But as we got round the side, it, it started to really chuck it down. So we went to go through the entrance, and uh, there's just a bloke there who worked at the train station. Went, no, got to go round the side. I was like, really? It's, it's like very heavy rain. Uh, and he went, nope. And turned around, and the back of his jacket said, uh, "Here to help." So I just went, here to help. <laughs> He couldn't hear me because uh, <laughs> he just chose not to. Uh, <laughs> I realised something today because Zach and Jay messaged me because uh, we did this. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, as I shouldn't have, that we, we did this photo shoot for the calendar. It's out now. Well, it will be by the time this goes out. Uh, so I mentioned it was a calendar, but I didn't realise they were building up for weeks. I thought it would be out the next week. Oh. You know, just, oh, no. just like making videos, I guess. I didn't think anyone would listen to this. So, <laughs> that's my defence. <laughs> what did they say to you? Uh, Were they furious? No, oh, they were fuming. Yeah, I had the word twat shouted <laughs> in the background. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, the, the calendar's out now. It's for charity. Uh, please go and buy it. You get a sexy picture of me and Max. And it is very sexy, isn't it, Max? It's too sexy. Uh, I'm annoyed they didn't Photoshop the wet stain out of my crotch. Um, <laughs> I thought them being good friends would uh, help a brother out. but um, out. No, no. Uh, I thought what? I thought it was just a shadow from the bike seat, but <laughs> when I when I sorry, see... was it wet or was it a stain? <laughs> it was a wet stain, Tom. Um, <laughs> just when finished. I <laughs> when I first because they put up a um, like a reveal sort of a reveal video, 
And the first thing I saw was a billboard with the Coochie trainers on, or like a, a bus stop uh, advertising yeah. thing. And my first thought was they had just posted the pictures all over Manchester. Like, <laughs> that's the sort of thing they'd do, you know, posting pictures of that up. Yeah. So that was that was quite worrying for me. But it's a calendar, you know, for a good cause. This is I it. Yeah. Hope we got a sexy month as well. <laughs> Finally, my wet crotch is doing good for the world. <laughs> <laughs> One step um, at a time. <laughs> that's it. Uh, right, so Max's wet crotch. Um, <laughs> transition that to uh, <laughs> Beer 52 are sponsoring the podcast this week. <laughs> Beer 52 are sponsoring the podcast this week. Um, what I've got here is a lovely Club, club Tropica beer. <laughs> and Tom is drinking O'Hara's, O'Hara's extra Irish stout. Because you've got Irish roots and I've got I tropical do. roots. Yeah. Uh, Max, what are you on there? Well, so I'm drinking some old engine oil, which is the name of the beer and not something I've accidentally picked up. Um, <laughs> it's very tasty. It's, and, uh, uh, your grandfather was a mechanic, wasn't he, sir? He was, like, very oh, famously it's... so, as I've mentioned yeah. many times no, on the podcast. No, maniac, sorry, not mechanic. <laughs> yeah. um, beer 52, they're offering a case of eight craft beers sourced and curated from the best breweries on the planet. All you need to do is go to www. That's too many Ws. All you have to do is go to www.beer52.com forward slash Stephen. Okay, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. And it's the number 52, 52. Uh, and all you have to do is cover the 595 postage. Not even paying anything. You just pay for postage. Yeah. That's, a, that's nice. a deal and a half. Each case is different, delivered direct to your doorstep. Um, sorry for slurring. This hits hard. <laughs> 5.5%. <laughs> Which again is still ideal because we're in lockdown. Bars haven't opened, pubs are still closed, but Beer 52 trundles on, uh, surges on. <laughs> Looking to stock up? Well, now's your chance. Beer 52 is the world's most popular craft beer discovery club with over 150,000 members. That's three times the amount of subscribers we have on this channel. Sort it out. Um, <laughs> they send a brand new case to, uh, every month. Each month's case has a different theme. This theme is tasty beer. Um, past themes have included beer from New Zealand, South <laughs> Africa. Oh, mate, this is delicious. <laughs> Korea. No accent done there. <laughs> wow. And all over the USA and Europe. If dark beer is not your thing, you can simply choose the light option. And your case will come with an award winning beer magazine, Ferment. Hold up, Tom. I'm surprised you put it down in the first place. <laughs> and a tasty snack. No, not me. Uh, don't worry, though. If you do change your mind, you can pause or cancel your account at any time. So just go to www.beer52.com forward slash Stephen to get your first case of eight beers for five ninety five. pounds uh, And remember, that's beer52.com forward slash Stephen with a PH. Um, so thank you very much for Beer 52. Outstanding stuff. Now, let's hop on over to the deep end. Oh, what's that I see? It's David Reese. Swimming in a pool of conspiracies. Uh, Drowning. <laughs> no, no. I can't swim. He's a good swimmer. He's a good swimmer. Uh, Drowning in the River Amazon. <laughs> um, David Reese. Yes. I remember last week you were fuming you didn't get to tell your conspiracy oh, theory. God, I, I, after, actually... the, after the whole podcast, tables yeah. were flying, holes you, were being punched you, in walls. You, you turned up to the flat with a, a broken beer 52 bottle press on neck. <laughs> really, really right. funny. I'm going to sit back, relax, and listen to your great conspiracy theory. Please right. take the floor. My conspiracy is about Shaka the Spear. Um, and the conspiracy about Shaka the Spear is did Shaka the Spear actually okay. write his own plays? Oh, that is a oh. good Shakespeare for <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, so, okay. <laughs> so there's a conspiracy that Shucker the Spear uh, did actually <laughs> write his own things, like plays and that, or poems, or sonnets. Um, oh. it, is, it is rumoured that there could be up to four, di four different people that wrote his plays. So, number one, 
Sir Francis Bacon, who, with a lot of extensive research, did not invent bacon, which I was very disappointed about. Anyway, the reason why everyone believes Sir Francis Bacon could have wrote William Shuckard Spears' plays is because yeah. um, they had very similar handwriting. Oh. Very interesting, I hear you ask. Um, it also, that... <laughs> Have you had a beer, Dave? (laughs) (laughs) I'm fucking (laughs) sorry, (laughs) mate. A man named Orville Owen was the first person to come up with this conspiracy theory. And he he found in a book, but written by someone else, a person called Philip Sidney, that Mm. Philip Sidney believed that Sir Francis Bacon was leaving secret messages in his plays that were leading it back to him. Ooh. Ooh. Um, that's all I know about Sir Francis Bacon. <laughs> so, do you have any of the, do you have any of the, the messages that he left in his? Actually, oh, I, I have got a bit more on Sir Francis Bacon. There, there was a play. I don't know what play it is because I forgot the name, but it's about the human body. Make one up, Dave. Make one up. Oh, yeah. It, uh, the, the solitary system. And it's I about the, the human body. And Shakespeare... Works wasn't a very edu- educated person like myself, uh, supposedly. So he, when he wrote this play about the human body, there was no such thing as Google or Yahoo search or Bing that he could search up and be like, oh, what, what's in the body? What can I write about? But Sir yep. Francis Bacon knew a person that knew a lot about the human body. And because this was in Tudor times, he was one of the only people. So people think, oh, how did Shakespeare know all so much about the human body? Well, he didn't. It was Sir Francis Bacon. Or Ooh. was it? Oh, there's the plot an, thickens. Oh, there's a, and there's another, per, there's three other people that it may <laughs> have been. Oh, so, <laughs> are you with me? <laughs> but, Edward D. Ver, I think I'm saying that right, but he, he was, <laughs> it's going to be on next week's podcast. Edward, <laughs> Edward, 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 Edward D. Ver. <laughs> um, he was also a poet. Um, I've lost where I am, and he was very educated in I mean, literature. <laughs> <laughs> he was very educated with literature, Italian language, culture, and law. And if you go back and look through your Shaka de Spear research, you'll find that he based a lot of his plays in Italy and talked about Italian culture, Italian law. But Shakespeare himself never actually went to Italy. So history says. And on the records that his school produced, give out, they learned about English uh, literature, Latin Greek mythology, nothing about the Italian language. So where mm. did Shakespeare get all his information from, I hear you ask? Gino de Campo. Gino de Campo. <laughs> Which brings me on to my third person. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me on to my third person. Um, William Stanley. Now, the oh. only reason people believe William Stanley could have been William Shakespeare was just because of their initials. So let's move on. <laughs> William Shatner. <laughs> William, Shatner. <laughs> William Smith. <laughs> All of these people have been Willow confused Smith. with Will Shakespeare. Um, but the fourth and more likely... Snipes. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth, the most likely to be William Shakespeare, is a man called Christopher Marlowe who Ooh. was at the time the big the biggest playwright before his untimely and suspicious death Ooh. he died well supposedly died during a brawl fight with his friends over a debate over the bill but what was what was sir christopher marlowe also educated in he was also educated in italian literature italian law italian dare i say it culture all to do with all to do with a lot of shakespeare's plays um william that christopher (laughs) christopher marlowe was also a secret agent 
<gasps> he was a secret agent that used to spy on people in Italy, France, Spain. But there was one thing about Christopher Marlowe that many people didn't like. During the Tudor times, when Queen Elizabeth was alive, it was a very Protestant country. And Christopher Marlowe was a Catholic, <gasps> which at the time was against the law. So to, to make himself less like, uh, what's, uh, I, I, I don't less know. Less of a social so, pariah. Yes, a social pariah. He supposedly faked his death. And because he had to fake his death to get out of trouble and couldn't write plays anymore, there was only one thing he could do. Write the plays and give it to someone to produce on their own name. And who is that person? Yes, William Shakespeare. Dave, I'm just wondering if you're... So are you saying it's one of the four people you mentioned? It could be one of the four or all four working together. But what do they gain from using somebody else's name? Like, uh, like, is William Shakespeare an actual person or did he never exist? See, they, they, William Shakespeare was a person that, uh, with the Christopher Marlowe uh, in research I found, he used to work closely with Christopher Marlowe. Well, not oh. closely, but they met each other and he was an mm. aspiring writer as well. But where he obviously could spell or write so well, Christopher Marlowe had to pretend to be dead and had to hide to a different country. Uh, so he used to write all the work down and say to Shakespeare, you produce this as your work, when actually it's his work, but because he can't put his name down on it because he's dead, yeah, it would come back on him. Yeah. They still made a lot of money, didn't they? Exactly, so, exactly. Even. Would it be, wouldn't it be easier to fake that you're a Protestant rather than fake you're dead? See, I thought that, but it's like... Jewish people during um, the Holocaust and that you could have just played. Glad, glad we mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on record, isn't it? It's exactly, record, exactly, and and yeah. and, and oh, that's another point I totally forgot. No one actually knows when William Shakespeare was born. Mm. It, mm. If you look on Wikipedia, you'll find out mm. where he was born, but and you'll say what date he died. And it also gives you the date that he was christened, or what, you know, where they get the hair wet. Uh, he's done that. <laughs> There's a date of Baptized. that, but that was the one. And, but no date of when he was actually born. I'm just wondering how many, you know, plays, books, poems did Shakespeare write in total? Um, I, he wrote over 70, oh, yeah, 30 something plays, 154 sonnets. And I think it was four poems. That's not that's not implausible for one person. No, no, exactly. And that's what that's what they say. That's what they're saying. All like one per, one person to do it is yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Italian culture thing. Did William Shakespeare have no education in Italian culture at all? On which record show with his school, which school they assumed that he went to because it was the closest school in his area when he was born. Right. They looked through the reports of what was taught. And no sign of Italian cult, Italian anything or French anything, which he also okay. uses French culture in some of his plays as well. Okay, I guess the second question then is how do you know how close his um, Italian law and his plays and stuff are to actual Italian law? Were they spot on or? Very good question. Um, I have no idea. Wait, well, there you go, <laughs> Riddle solved. He <laughs> could have just been chatting shit and just said it yeah. was Italian. Touche, um, touche. So, Dave, is your is your conspiracy theory that it was Christopher Marlowe? I, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I after watching it all and after having a good like research into it, I think I don't really think like it was all Christopher Marlowe. I reckon William Shakespeare wrote some of his stuff as well. But after Christopher Marlowe's mysterious death, I think he must have helped out and gave some of um, some things towards him. Yeah. Oh. The but idea was that the character of Shakespeare took on and like a, you know, exactly. a life of its own, and yeah, so people maybe even Shakespeare himself did contribute, but yeah, other people did. Yeah, yeah, and and if you look, look if you search William Shakespeare up, all the portraits, there's no portrait that looks exactly the same. They're all different. Mm. Different artists, sense. maybe. True that. Mm. True. <laughs> <laughs> did not think of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. 
Interesting, interesting. But uh, now I'd like to ask, what are your thoughts and feelings on the subject? <laughs> uh, Dave, I think, I think you might have a point about Christopher Marlowe, if he, you know, Shakespeare couldn't write very well. Well, but if, um, uh, it's, not, it's not impossible that one person uh, did all the writing, if no? it was Christopher Marlowe, because it's not, it's not an amazing amount. I'd, I'd want to see some evidence from... Christopher Marlowe. Oh, Marlowe's point. Of, yeah, I want to see some uh, some of these little Easter eggs. Uh, you know, like the Francis Bacon stuff. I want to see him yeah. hinting yeah. that he was Shakespeare. Uh, I want some conclusive evidence before I, uh, I jump ship. My my thought was what you said about why would they let someone else take all the glory for their work? Yeah. That is that was the one thing that made me think. Oh, well, if that was me, I'd be like, oh, piss off. I'm. I'll, my name's going down in history yeah. but then again if you already have faked your death and now you can't do that the <laughs> only way to publish your plays would be doing something along those lines this is so, it yes it, it, it's yeah, a maybe conspiracy much of an ego. It's... exactly maybe mm. he didn't give a shit but <sighs> christopher marlowe he's an interesting he was a spy i didn't know there were spies around in tudor times yeah like, it was one of the know. first secret services of uh secret services yeah if he was doing that, would he have time to write all these plays? Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought as well. And he was going to uni. He was doing. He was apparently like coming up with designs to build like architecture as well. I was like, this man is busy. And then you've got to write all these plays with so And if William Shakespeare come up with over three thousand different words for the English language, so yeah. if you've got to be doing that, coming up with three thousand different words for the English language, coming up with architecture, going out spying on random people. Right. It's a lot of work. Look, I guess he travelled, didn't he? And, back and then in the he day, travelled. Travel yeah, yeah. took a long time, you know, especially if you like sailing and stuff. It takes yeah, days, yeah. weeks. So yeah, I get you maybe had time on the boat. True, too shade to work. Boat, yeah. Not impossible though. I get sick mm. you know, reading in a car, never mind writing on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're used to it over a certain time, maybe. Dave, right. I don't believe uh, it. <laughs> <not having it>. <laughs> <laughs> but after you tell me he's a spy, he's doing all this stuff, there's no time in the day for uh, you know I mean? it. Is, right uh... <laughs> but again, it was the Tudor time, so you've got nothing to distract you like TV or trampolines or the train. Uh, yeah, but if you go for a poo, it, you can't just flush. You have to go and take it outside. Oh, and yeah. Everything takes longer. Cooking takes longer. Touche. Uh, and washing your clothes as well. Yeah, poo in a bucket. Think about that. Throw it out later. For, uh, uh, I'm going to say I don't believe it. Don't believe it. Tom, have I swayed you at any point? Uh, um, well, it's, it, I think it comes from a time when, you know, if little lies are told and things are written differently. It just goes down in history because it's not, I think, you know, history gets written, doesn't it? So yeah. it could be, it's very possible that lots of the things we think are definite are not quite as they seem. So yeah. may, maybe, maybe possible. Um, I think it, I, as Stephen says, I need to see a little bit more, but Into it's it. certainly possible. You know, no smoke without fire. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe. Max? Anything's possible, but um, yeah, I, I just think... Not this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's just one of those. It's just a conspiracy theory because he's big. That's To me, that's what that is, you know. Um, sure, some evidence might point that way, but like with the Italian law, unless it's like word for word correct, then that means nothing. You know, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, Good point. I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. Good point. And I hate Shakespeare. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was a dick. So many fucking essays at school over Shakespeare. Oh, yeah, I I know. Know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> Poor I invented 3,000 words. Oh, look at yeah, well Max, done. Max, will you invent a word now, please? Baba Ganoush. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry. We'll forget that. <laughs> um, so, uh, is that conclusive? Um, I believe so. Hey, I'll, I'll, let me just. Um, oh, there, there's some, I've got some things that say, like, for his argument that he was actually a real person, if you want to hear some of them. Okay, yeah. yeah. For Shakespeare. So, uh, there is marriage records of him and Anne Hathaway. Not the new Anne Hathaway, obviously, but <laughs> his wife, Anne Hathaway. The OG who would, Anne Hathaway. <laughs> who yeah. would now be Anne Shakespeare. But um, there's records of them having kids as well. So it's not necessarily him being like 
not existent at all. Just yeah. did he actually write what he wrote? Or yeah. uh, oh, 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 here's a random fact for you. I found I thought it was quite funny. Um, Virginia, you know the place Virginia, right in America, that was named for the Virgin Queen. What are the chances? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That is random. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's in no way connected to what we're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, during my research, I was like, Cause Christopher Marlowe. Yeah, when people say this is random, it often isn't. <laughs> uh, that, that really was. <laughs> Out of the well, blue. Well done, Dave. Thank you. Um, Thank well you. researched. People in the Thank comments, you. Thank you. please please let us know what you think of that. Uh, if you've got any evidence to support Dave's argument. Helps out. Off the tear down. down. Now let's move on to what I like to call Stephen Lies. Um, last week we deceived Dave with three lies. We haven't done it this week. Was that a lie? We haven't. <laughs> uh, no, we haven't. No, there is a truth to find. Okay, okay. Um, David Reese, are you ready? Born ready. I once tried to prank my mum and nearly ended up in a different country. <laughs> okay, okay. Tom? <clears throat> uh, I was suspended from school once for a crime I didn't commit. Okay, okay. Uh, Max, Maximado? I once pranked my friend so hard, I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, Steve, <laughs> yeah. elaborate. You pranked your uh, mum. What, 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 what prank was you pulling? Oh, it was a great one. Um, <laughs> 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 so, so, I was a... Uh, I was in Switzerland at the time. Right, um, okay. So, me and my sister were on holiday with my mum. She'd gone out for dinner somewhere else. And, and me and my sister, we just, you know, sorted our own. And then we were heading back on, a, a, mm -hmm. on our way to the hotel. And then we saw our mum on the other side of the road walking up. So we thought, it'd be funny if we jumped on this tram, because there's loads of trams in Switzerland. Uh, if we jumped on the tram... Uh, to go past her, like waving as if we're going off somewhere, um, like out on an out for the night. Um, so we jump on the tram and, and we're going past her and just waving. Uh, unfortunately, she's distracted by the building <laughs> on her left, <laughs> completely blanks us, uh, and we keep going. Um, obviously, we didn't know the the Swiss route for the tram, so we we kept going for ages oh because we were like oh shit we'll just get off the next stop the next stop didn't come for about 15 minutes at which point we start seeing signposts for france and we've got into the swiss ghetto you know just people lobbing tobler around and stuff uh, <laughs> and, and we're really panicking i think i think i'm like 10 10 or 12 at most um sister's four years older so we were shitting ourselves so you pranked yourself in a way yeah I, I learned a lesson and I never pranked anyone again. Again. <laughs> well, I know that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, did, you, did your mum find out that you nearly went to France? If so? Uh, yeah, we told her. She, she just sort of you know, laughed in our faces. That's what you get for that alone, yeah. being little yeah. shits, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, what, what, what did you go to Switzerland for? Did you go for skiing or what? Just a cheap holiday. We saw the hotel. It was five stars, but it was really cheap. So we thought, we're not going to miss out on that. Yeah. Uh, so we went there and it was in Basel or Baal. Baal. And uh, how long did you go for? Three days. Three days. That's an yeah, unusual nights. holiday for three days. Was it nice, Baal? Don't remember. Too shaken from a challenge. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Right, moving on. Uh, Tom, Thomas, hello. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no, we had this um we had this substitute teacher like a serial substitute teacher that was okay you know on and off specific subjects yeah <laughs> there all the time for, for different subjects right. um and i was I, I was a bit of a nuisance in class and uh just mainly just making comments it was never really worse than that um and then one day she had, she was sub, sub in a french class uh, and i'd come in late to this class for i can't remember why but um uh, she'd, she'd obviously she'd left her coffee, tea or coffee, or something unattended, and someone had put a snail uh, in her coffee. Right. Uh, she took a swig. Uh, she did, she got a load of snail, and she stood up and straight away uh, she told me to stand up and said, "How dare you, you disgusting child!" Uh, I tried to plead my innocence, and she said, "Stop talking. I will never ever believe that this was not you." Um, 
and sent me to the, uh, the principal's office, or the head teacher. Um, she spoke to him first and kind of, basically, the, I, was only, I was only young and I did have a bit of a reputation for just, again, you know, just being a, Playing with an idiot. <laughs> you know, she, yeah, she, she just said, you know, he will try to deny it, but I know that it's him. Um, so yeah, I was uh, a betrayal lead to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I spent the rest of the day in isolation, and I was suspended for the next day. And, uh, oh. yeah, okay, on. okay. So uh, who actually did it? Name and shame. Uh, one of my mates. Uh, name, Niall. Name? Oh, fuck no. you, Niall. Yeah. Niall. That's a weird name. I've... Joe McGrath went to Tom's school. Oh, right. Oh, right. Okay. So that's a. Uh, get so a bit that's of a the hand. Sort of there. Unruly pupils you get yeah. there. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Tom, did. Uh, were you, would you, did you have any hand in it at all? Would you, would you, was you helping out with it? No, I did nothing. You I was just in, sat I there was, and this, watched. For the, this is the one time I was completely innocent. Oh, right. um, it's weird that you didn't bring this uh, situation up on our school podcast. I, uh, if I remember, that didn't appear at all. I went Did to it? school for many years, Dave. Oh, <laughs> um, oh that's right. Oh, okay, it would be impossible okay. to, you know, to remember to remember it. <laughs> you've got, okay, you got to keep some things kind of yeah. <laughs> hidden. Hush, hush. It's I only remember this wanna... when I was I was racking my brains, thinking, you know, for. A, I get that sometimes. I'll give you the tell. benefit of the doubt. I'll give you the benefit of doubt. I do that. Cheers, okay. Dave. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bollocks. Uh, <laughs> Max. Hello. Max- Maximodo. Right. You're right. Explain on the details of your endeavour. Well, God, he's right. good. This detective. <laughs> Cast using your big mind words back. To confuse. <laughs> <laughs> and I am confused. Uh, <laughs> Cast your mind back eh, about five years ago. Um, young, young wee nipper Max. How well was she? Very say? unwell. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking on death's door. <laughs> I've just been clinging on these last couple of years. Um, what, five years ago? I'm t- uh, 23. Me and the gang uh, having a sash, drinking away, puffing away. Um, <laughs> and I thought I'd get my, uh, my good friend James with a little cheeky little prank, because he'd pranked right. me earlier in the day. Um, okay. So obviously, uh, I put some chili powder on a cigarette of his. Um, oh, and I thought it would make him cough a little bit. Um, the issue was, obviously, in my drunk state, I smoked the cigarette and threw up afterwards. Did you immediately smoke the cigarette yourself? I didn't do it and then go, oh, here's a cigarette. That's <laughs> <laughs> like you do, though, Max. <laughs> Wait a minute, put this here in my hand. Um, no, I put it down. Uh, you know, I was going to give it to him. Um, yeah. And then I rolled myself one and gave him the wrong one. Oh. <laughs> what what did James do to you earlier That's in the day? It. Yeah, yeah. Good question. Um, Cheers, have Tom. you seen those stupid things Sorry. where people put uh, cling film over the toilet? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit yeah. everywhere. No, just a little <laughs> bit of wee, a little bit of wee, and then I noticed it. I was fine. <laughs> clever, clever. Luckily for so, me, I used I used to wee in my sink most of the time, though. So you know, <laughs> no one no one noticed. Did, how, how, how much did you smoke before you realised this is a... Well, peppery? I took my first draw in and then obviously started coughing everywhere and right. then I threw up in the sink. Jeez. Are you allergic to peppers then? Or? No, no, but uh, trust me, breathing in pepper mm. is going to... Pepper, I, I, can, I can imagine. And those sweet lungs of yours, you know, right. it's, it's grim. Get a full inhale. Okay. Yeah. Poor sink of yours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dissolved. <laughs> right, um... Oh. Tom, I'm just going to say yours is straight up bollocks, <laughs> I believe. Now, Why? Steve, there was a lot of umming and <laughs> there was a lot of umming and erring during your ones. Like, it took you a while to think of what the prank was. Many years ago. Or uh, yeah, uh, Max, you knew yours straight away, but you, yours was yours is usually always right. Yeah. You go out a limb and say. Uh, Max, ah, Steve, yours is telling the truth. Dave, you are Bob on. Boom! <laughs> I get it. Thank you. Thank you all. Done, David. Well done. Thank you. Uh, mine was half true, Dave. Oh, did I He did go to school. No, what was the truth in it, Tom? Uh, everything up until me getting uh, the, the punishment. Uh, I, I was sent out of the class. Really? It all happened, as I said, yeah, but it just wasn't there. Uh, 
just felt like the story was incomplete when it all just, <laughs> you know, it resolved itself quite quickly. But she did, oh. uh, she didn't like me and she did, she did stand up and say, you're a disgusting boy. I'll never ever believe this was not you. Yeah. And everyone enjoyed that so it. much because they knew it wasn't me that I just felt like I had to go with it because, you know, uh, I would have played funny. class. They put a snail in. Well, they, no, they put a snail um, on the desk uh, next to a coffee cup. And she was out of the room for like 15 minutes and the snail just went in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> and, we were, and people were watching it laughing. It was like, yeah, hilarious. But, um, so yeah. it's the snail's fault in all this? Yeah, the snail pranked her <laughs> and I got blamed. <laughs> fair play, fair play. Here we go. <laughs> Guys, buckle in. Say goodnight to your mama and listen to Tom Rooney. Right then, so uh, my conspiracy theory is is really fucking out there. Um, it's uh-huh. mental, but it's uh, it's just contains so many mad coincidences. The theory is that Donald Trump and his family have time travelled from a distant time to our current history with intentions of ruling the world, and this is all backed up by the coincidences that I'll lay out. Now, to begin with, uh, a bit of background on the gentleman who's supposedly responsible for this time travel technology. So you've probably all heard of Nikola Tesla. Uh-huh. So he was a Serbian inventor, um, but famous for giving us alternating current technology. So it's basically uh, I think it's, it's technology that like 80% of the things we use today are based on this technology that he created. So Tesla wanted to give free electricity to the world. He wanted to uh, take electricity from the uh, ionosphere and give it to everyone for free. So JP Morgan, the banker that was funding him, uh, took his funding away and invested instead in Edison. So that's why we don't hear as much about Tesla. Okay, so Tesla was working on more than just free energy. He claimed to have invented a death ray, an oscillator capable of creating earthquakes, and even a time machine. So in 1895, which is, I think, kind of links into your Illuminati uh, stuff, Max. Okay. That year's oh, I, I cut that from last week's book. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> So the reporter found him sitting in a cafe looking pretty beat up. So he asked him why. Tesla told him he'd just been hit by 3.5 million volts of electricity. He then described how contact with the electric... I need a naked bath. (laughs) (laughs) I need to make a time machine and go to a lush. (laughs) Anyway, it caused him to go out of his space and time window. He said he'd been able to see the past, the present, the future at the same time. So Ingersoll Lockwood was born in 1841. He's the author of this. Uh, this is where it all gets a bit weird. So he was, a, he was a lawyer and a writer, and he actually began his career as a diplomat serving under Lincoln. So he was really well-connected. Uh, he was a close friend of a guy called Henry Clay, who formed the Republican Party, uh, as we know it today. And they're both on record as being Freemasons. So they're involved in secret society and stuff. So he wrote these, uh, first of all, he wrote these children books. Uh, there was two titles in particular. One's called The Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump. It was written in 1889. So we're talking uh, over a century ago. And Baron Trump's marvellous underground journey. So this is about, so Baron Trump obviously is, uh, because shares the same name as Donald Trump's son, Baron. So it's about a little boy who lives in Castle Trump. (laughs) (laughs) And he's a member, he's a member of the, uh, he's like an extended member of the royal family. So he's, he's a wealthy boy. He's tired of his life of luxury, so he goes on an adventure. So the book lays out this journey, and it's all based in Russia. Uh, so the, the book refers to this Portland, Russia, that would lead him to a world within a world. The place in Russia that Baron Trump is sent is near the mountains. It's an area that we now know contains underground caves. And one of these caves was unearthed in 1991 and was found to contain um, out-of-place artifacts. Scientists discovered what they believed to be 300,000-year-old nanotechnology. Jump forward a few years... Um, Ingersoll Lockwood then wrote a dystopian novel called 1900 or The Last President. Now, this is where it gets, the coincidences get really strange. So the book is about a, a wealthy man who lives on Fifth Avenue, Fifth Avenue in New York. Trump Tower is on Fifth Avenue in New York. He decides to run for president, but he's not a politician. So he's very much an outsider. No one expects him to win, but he does. So already the parallels are really strange considering this book is written in the, uh, the 19th century. The people were so outraged at his victory that it led to riots. Uh, The book actually states that the Fifth Avenue Hotel will be the first to feel the fury of the mob. And the Fifth Avenue Hotel isn't there anymore, Um, but the the site of it is owned by Jared Kushner, who's Trump's nephew. 
he's kind of a president of the everyman. So everyone's sick of Wall Street and sick of all the you know, these wealthy people. Uh, it, it escalates and escalates, and that's why it's called the last president kind of society. The, the South raise, uh, rises against the, the North, and it all descends into chaos. And the army needs to be brought in. And he, uh, he declares martial law on the streets. So obviously there's lots of parallels with the riots and everything that's going on now. Mm-hmm. And just the whole narrative of uh, Trump's presidencies. And he also appoints a man with the name Pence to his cabinet. Lafay Pence. And Trump's vice president is Pence also. Mm-hmm. So, transport to 1943. Tesla's died. So the US government seized all his property, which included all the documents relating to his inventions. Now, according to files released by the FBI, those documents were handed over to the head of research at MIT to see if they had any ideas of significant value. Supposedly they didn't and were returned shortly after. However, after the exchange, some mysteriously went missing. Now, the man trusted to look over these papers was a bloke called Dr. John G. Trump, Donald Trump's uncle, and he was also a physicist himself. So the idea is that Trump lied about the paper's value, kept some of them himself, and uh, used it to recreate Tesla's time machine. And obviously he shared them with shared them with the family. And the manuscript that could be being talked about is Tesla's manuscript and was passed on to Donald Barron. And that's how they've traveled through time. So your yeah. theory is Barron Trump yeah. has traveled through time. Has Donald? No. Uh, so... I also sent you a picture and put that up. Um, this is the illustration from the book written in uh, 1895, I think. Uh, and this is little Baron Trump. There is, still a bit, there is still a bit of a similarity there. He does yeah. look like a drawing, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, it's, uh, I guess the, the link is uh, Donald Trump's uncle and these mysteriously disappearing papers. And obviously Tesla's kind of considering how how much Tesla did for the world and how, what a genius he was. He's kind of been erased a little bit. The book is just really weird for how many, and it's a real book. You can go and you can go find it. And these are written in the late 1800s and they have so many weird, weird parallels with uh, Trump's presidency and just the fact that some of the, what the characters are called and what they did. And yeah, with the, with the cave in Russia, really weird. Um, so it, the, the place on the map that he travels to for this portal was a, a hidden place in the mountains and only discovered in the 90s was a cave containing really out of place technology. It's the theory that Baron Trump goes back in time to like he's lived through the presidency stuff. Has mm. he gone back in time to the time that the book was written? We'll, we'll, we'll take that time travel is happening and you know Donald and his and his son or whatever have, have, have visited this past time in 1895 mm. when you know a lot of your um, stuff was based. Yeah, would what's be. going on? Yeah. If they were going to rub shoulders with people, it would be people in that world. And people Lockwood's in power. Re- yeah, Lockwood's a really mm. weird character for the people that he was rubbing shoulders with, mm. and how heavily he was involved in secret societies and stuff. So it, I think it's just even if even if there wasn't necessarily a clear you know, pa- passing on of a message, just the fact that Lockwood, who, you know, was the guy he yeah. was, then then produced these books. It, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just, at the very least, it's bizarre coincidences. That so has, years later, strange. has and, Donald Trump done this yet, if that makes sense? is Or is he going to time travel in the future? Like, is he going to time travel? Has he time traveled yet, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, time travel is a hard I, one. <laughs> I don't know, Max. I don't know. I guess the 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 link is to it, it, it's it's just odd that yeah, the there's a lot of past, yeah. you know would weird could conspiracy, yeah. predict the narrative of Trump's um, mm. presidency and the parallels. Obviously, you know, you think even even from com- let's say he did time travel, but there was a you know from from basic conversations from what he would give away. It's almost like that stuff has kind of been recreated. So it was just, uh, not, not that I believe the conspiracy, I think it's just uh, an interesting one. You know, that, uh, it is. It there is. is a lot of coincidences, though. It yeah. is. You're right. I, think, I think that's it, really, because it's like, um, you know, what, what, what's the thing where, where they give uh, a load of monkeys typewriters to be able to recreate Shakespeare? You know, <laughs> that was bacon, though, wasn't yeah. it? Or well, Christopher Marlowe. <laughs> 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 you to it, you bastard. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it probably is just a coincidence. Um, but it's, but it's really if fucking If the Trumps weird. could time travel, yeah. they'd handle 
things better than they do because Trump's regarded as a fucking moron by most people. I think yeah. if he would have like yeah, got in power how, for how, longer. Look at what he did with coronavirus. I mean, you're putting me in a position where now I have to kind of stick up for Trump being a time traveller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Stephen, well, I'll take your point. Um, I guess why would he I... wait till he's like 70 to become president? Unless this is his plan, mm. like with the virus, that he, like, he knows what's going to happen in the future with, after what he's doing with the yeah. virus. Maybe he travelled back to Wuhan, China. And... Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe Trump's... he planted it. No, you, know, you say he waits till he's 70. Maybe he's not 70. Maybe he's, you know, he's like Lockwood in them books, maybe he's like 140. Why would he wait till he's 140 to become president? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when this. I don't know the intricacies of time travel and just how this has panned out. I don't know. I think. I think when it comes time travel, I don't believe in time travel. Um, I believe that there are definitely things that we don't understand and technologies that we don't understand. I don't. I find it hard to believe that people can travel through time. Even, even as a stretch for things that we can't comprehend. Like, you know, there's so much of the universe we don't understand, and there's probably so many other civilizations out there. But time travel, I find it very hard to get my head around. Yeah. Um, Stephen Hawking yeah. said something about time travel, which is for you to go back in time. Oh, that's that's the impression. Huh? <laughs> don't listen to him, Max. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> for you to go back in time, there has to be a machine there to accept you into the new time. Yeah. So that you wouldn't be able to travel back to like the dinosaur age because this machine hasn't been yeah. built then. You need to have a machine to go back to. So uh, you could travel yeah. forward. Yeah. If, yeah. If there is a machine, like, yeah, if the machine's built, uh, you get so, in it, you can go so forward. So perhaps that links into having the technology around now yeah. and the technology in the future yeah. to travel in that respect. Um, but like, I, th- I think if you, if, you, if you delve into history, there's loads of really. Like, you know, we've talked about this, Max, about kind of libraries, like the, the Library of Alexander the Great and stuff that got burned yeah. down and supposedly lost, you know, centuries worth of knowledge that yeah. if hadn't been lost, we'd be we'd way be more so advanced far ahead. Yeah. today yeah. Um, mm. because that had to be all, you know, recompiled. And like when people talk about the pyramids and how they were built with the technologies that they supposedly had around the time, just moving things around on ropes and wooden pallets and stuff like how they did that. And there's loads of, conspiracies that link into into yeah. that and I know, like, aliens you know, alien technology and stuff it, it, <laughs> it is odd and i think i think at the, at the very very least when these things get talked about there's there's gaps there's clearly gaps in knowledge that's probably that's probably there's only there's loads of knowledge that's been lost in yeah. the past that we don't have now like you just look at buildings and stuff that are built and you, you we always think of the past as being more primitive but the technology to build some of these buildings you know, they, they obviously understood, you know, physics and maths and, you know, mm. materials incredibly. Well, to support your point, yeah. my mum often says, I've forgotten more things than you know. So, well, there you go. <laughs> that ties in, doesn't it? <laughs> that is, that's the little seal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> You've gone full circle on this one. Right. Um, so, should we, does anyone have any more comments or questions? Mm-hmm. I think of what Stephen says about why would he wait until he's 70. Um, I think if it was like a family thing and they just gave it to Donald Trump, who is, you know, we can all agree a fucking idiot. <laughs> I, think, I think a fucking idiot with the power of time travel, like he probably would do that, but he's still an would, idiot. So Would he do like 10 seasons of The US Apprentice if you have all this power, money? And the, the ability to time travel. Oh, he loves that stuff, doesn't he? Doing the celebrity apprentice. Mm. He loves it. You know, the going only thing to. Can... But you know, yeah, it, that's what I mean by idiot. Power, have a little fun. Yeah. <laughs> He's always going on about yeah. his, his apprentice thing, isn't he? And obviously, it is odd that you know that the. So if you, if you look at the so, so Donald and Baron are the ages they are now. Yeah. And Ingersoll Lockwood, the way he's written his stuff, is it has them as the ages then. You know, tr- Baron is a little boy who looks weirdly similar to, you know, I know, again, it's an illustration. And then Donald is, is an older man. You know, presidents tend to be older people. So obviously it takes that age difference and replicates it as well, which is another coincidence that, you know, they're not different ages or whatever. Does Donald Trump ever reference this book? Is, it, is he aware that it exists? Has he said, oh, yeah, it's... Uh... Um, oh, he must be. I don't know if one of his, uh, like his... I don't think there's been any of his uh, White House press conferences that aren't really weird 
<laughs> so it wouldn't surprise me if he's, he'd been questioned on it. Yeah. The only thing that would make me think, like, the reason why he took ages to get to the Predators presidency is like saying like Doctor Strange in Avengers, you know, where he goes for all the all the different situations that you've got to do before actually being a successful begin president. Mm -hmm. Maybe he had to do the 10 years of apprentice for him to become the president. (laughs) That that famous (laughs) scene in Doctor Strange (laughs) where he has to do 10 seasons. (laughs) (laughs) To kill Thanos. You've got to do 10 seasons then then you can kill him. I think the, obviously, (laughs) with regards to being president, like people, it's not the best person for the job. No. Like, you know, the best person to lead the world today isn't, you know, a 75, eight year old man. But presidents always tend to be, you know, men of a certain age. Uh, and, you know, I think it's, it's more, it takes, it takes a, a lifetime, if you like, to, to gather influence and secrets mm. and, you know, just enough clout to be able to run. KSI's got clout already. Yeah. 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 A young but person it's... couldn't run. They just don't <laughs> have enough allies. Yeah. Like the side men. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> do you reckon? Um, do you reckon Donald Trump read this book and that's what made him call his son Baron? And yeah, I thought that. I thought that. the last president he could have read that. Yeah, it's funny. So the, so the boy in the book is called Trump, and Baron is his title. Yeah. Uh, Baron is just a member of the nobility. Yeah. yeah. Oh. But, but Donald Trump's stupid family. enough to go. That's a cool first name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think it's a it's a coincidence. That's I don't believe in time travel. Wow. <laughs> Go on, Max. Come on, you you're my pal. Back me up. <laughs> uh, oh, I've just seen you put a tenner on my couch. Yes, Tom. Um, yeah, <laughs> totally true, mate. Totally true. Do you ever wonder, right? You know, have you ever seen Click? Yeah. yeah. You know, when they pause time, do you ever just wonder, like, you maybe you're stuck in time? Bernard's watch. Bernard's watch was yeah. the original. Exactly. Obviously. And then yeah. and then it, click it again. And that maybe we've been sat here having this conversation. I've been froze but, uh, for about uh, 10 years, but we haven't aged. But it's feels like it. back in time. Do you, know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's usually just your shit Wi Fi, Dave, when you're freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a massive Tom Looney. Tom Looney extra. Exhausting. Very uh, good. Now it is time for what I like to call IMAX. Hold for applause. I I was just waiting for everyone to clap, that's all. (laughs) Don't worry, don't worry. (laughs) Cheers, cheers, guys. Um, Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Yeah, you want a review on the freshest, newest movie? Sure, I'll give that to you right now. Hi, guys. This week, we're going to be talking about the great film a Bug's Life. Oh, oh sick, wow. sick. Love that film. I've oh. decided to go back to just reviewing cool new yeah. movies. Hallelujah. Uh, and I love Fucking I hell. love Bug's Life, especially because you know, it, it shows how the big leaders w- yeah. don't want the, the little ants to, or the little bugs to, to rise unite because they'll, yeah. they'll overtake Divide them. and conquer. This is, yeah. It's a great... I, Bug's Life is amazing. Such a powerful message yeah, for, really for a children's film, you know? It's exactly, true. exactly. Now, I agree. I watched the film yesterday and where I do agree with, you know, rising up and bringing our leaders crashing down. I realized something, uh, something that scared me to my core. And basically the grasshoppers, uh, hopper played by Tom's favorite YouTuber, as he spoke about last week, Kevin Spacey. Um, they, uh, came, they come to the ant colony once a year to take food. Uh, they get all the little ants to take food, uh, Make give them loads of food, um, and he he has to leave. Oh, the, <laughs> he has to leave the colony <laughs> to get uh, some warrior warrior bugs to come and help solve mm. the problem. Um, obviously, you know you got your links to uh, American capitalism, crushing the 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 work hard working man. Um, mm-hmm. Hopper is seen on a bullet, which is fired from a an American assault rifle weapon. Um, so that's that's what everyone knows. Uh, what nobody's picked up on is the fact that the warrior ants are circus performers, and they use the power of special effects to bring everyone down. Ooh, ooh, what's that? Who who makes the Bugs Life movie? Oh, only a group of special effects artists. Yeah, <gasps> I believe that a Bugs Life is indoctrinating the youth 
to work for Pixar to bring down the the elite, the global elite, with Pixar being the leaders. <laughs> Not finished, Disney. Max? Sorry? You finished? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm re- open for questions. <laughs> no, you go, so, no. Uh, oh, no, no, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, um, also, Flick is, is, is ta- he's ridiculed, isn't he? He's seen as an idiot. And I think, you know, anyone who does kind of allude to there being a larger conspiracy at work and tries to question the status quo is always framed as being a, a fool. Idiot. Exactly. Um, Only a maverick. Yeah, but, but well, obviously look, we learned we learned that you last know, week you know the word the conspiracy. Yeah, it was it wasn't he an inventor as well? So it it links in with Tesla being exactly. known as the fool for inventing Max, things. Disney yeah. a part of the global elite. They're the big one yeah. of the biggest. Yeah, but companies not in the this. World. This was Pixar back when they were a, a young startup company. This is their second movie. Must have cost a lot of money. Got have uh, some big investors, rich people there. Well, they were rich themselves, I believe. Uh, do you I think, know what, Matt? Right. So Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs was... Yeah, but this, this, is, this is why it's... Do, all, you, know, do you not think the, you know, the, 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 the actual clear metaphor of the show is way more powerful and more obvious than anything that alludes to the use of special effects? Have, have you like, ever heard like, of the term... Like even, if you, like even if you were to use special effects to overthrow the elite, um, <laughs> just the idea of overthrowing the elite and coming together to do it, however you choose to do it, special effects or not, is what it's saying, and that's really powerful. And that's yeah, sure, that's, that's the overarching message, but it's the yeah. subliminal message underneath that, which yeah. is saying, you've got to use special effects. Oh, Pixar is a special effects company. We're going to help right. you. Max, could you find the subliminal message in this, please? Fuck off, that was shit. Yeah? <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to read between the lines, but I think I think it's I think it's pretty on the nose. Get out, Max. Yeah. Off you go. Embarrassing. Oh, I don't is, know why. You know. I don't know why like you invite him back on the show. To be honest, it's, I really don't. It's it's. No, he says he wants the freshest movies. That's why right. he hasn't been able to do IMAX. And he comes back with the Bugs Life. I don't understand Idiot. it, me. Don't understand mm. it. Laziness. Everybody gets just the same shit. And it's a shame because I thought he was going somewhere with that, you know, because that I'm is so a really good. interesting movie. And then obviously. If he just he focuses on one point yeah. and takes it far too literally and negates all the good work that he's done. I thought he was yeah, going to do the Pixar theory, you know, like going yeah, that into would that. Be, that would we're good. on we're on conspiracy mm. theories. Yeah, so, that would have made sense, Dave. Yeah, yeah. it just oh, Matt doesn't think like that, unfortunately. No. You know, my, my family, my family listen to this and they go, "What's that IMAX segment? It's it's worse and worse every week." Yeah. Well, my dad rings me up whilst it's on and goes. <laughs> Is it like, like and it gets sick? Like it's that, yeah, it's that, yeah, it's that bad. And I'm, I'm like, Dad, don't. It's just we're yeah, trying to mom, get rid of him, but my mum's going. It's not as if he's, you know, easy on the eye either. It's... <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, mate. How are you? Oh, for fuck's sake. Hey, is this is this uh, Donald Mac? No, no, this is... This, I is might Brian sound, Dobbins? No, 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 no. Hush your lips, mate. It's, it's only bloody dicks by the private eye. Dicks by the private eye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you may have heard of me with my mini adverts on the TV and that. No. I, Not if, sure. if you've lost a loved one, if, if you've lost a loved one, then you'll need a dick. <laughs> Any dick oh, in particular? You. Well, me, Dick's by the private eye. Dick, what are you doing on the podcast? Well, uh, I've, I'm in a bit of a bother, you see, because I've got a, I'm on a case, you know. I've got my magnifying glass and my big pipe, and I'm I'm scooping around because one of my one of my good friends, Connor Spirit, he's died. What? <laughs> he's died as as most of the members of the segment has in the past, and. and <laughs> He's, yeah, so he's dead. He, that's, he, uh, that's terrible. How did it happen? Well, from what I've written in my notes, he was found dead in a Fiat Punto last week. Yeah, what God. a way to go. He was on the show last week. That's awful. That is really sad. Poor guy. And <sighs> I, I, I'm on this podcast because I watched last week's podcast and I realised you were one of the last ones he spoke to. So I need to know if he's, you know, given any of the who-how, who-how to you. Um, well, so you, you listen to the podcast, didn't you? Dick. I'm a big fan. Dick, IMAX uh, is one of my favourite shows. <laughs> Dick, uh, I'm just wondering, who, who put you on this case then, if Connor's dead? Well, Connor did himself. A few days before he died, he messaged me and said, oh, 
I, I, I think something's going to happen and I need you to find out for me. Right. So I've, I went to visit his home, you see, and yeah. uh, he wasn't in. He could have been anywhere. Mm. But he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's known to use an etch sketch to write some of his messages. And, That's true. Uh, he can write with his mouth, but not his hands. That's it. That's it, you see. <laughs> and I saw it in, no in a window. In I saw an etch a sketch etch a sketch fuck me <laughs> <laughs> the fact is I've got no lips so it's hard to say stuff <laughs> and uh, I, I saw it on his window so, so I, I looked in it and uh, I, I saw I saw some writing on it and I was so shaken though that, uh, that I accidentally erased everything you see do you understand did you, did you find anything at the scene of the crime I went into his boot and I saw a plastic bag you know the sort you get from a Tesco or a Sainsbury's or a Morrison's. Yeah, we, we, we know about plastic bags, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> oh, good, good. And uh, inside was a man's head, and two hands, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, for what I thought was a, a little finger from the hand, but it surprised me because he, he already had five fingers on each hand. And then I realised it was a tiny chode. <laughs> <laughs> That's talk, funny, isn't it? Talk, talk about a private investigator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great, Dick Spy. That's great. Cheap. <laughs> cheap. <laughs> no, I'm Dick. not cheap. <laughs> Dick, do you have any leads? I've got uh, I, I got some, but I don't think you'll be able to jumpstart that car with them. <laughs> <laughs> Post for well, Dick, you're a card, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, well, oh. well uh, so I've been doing my investigations, you see, and I listened to your, I listened to your podcast, and after, after straining through IMAX, <laughs> I think it gave me ear bleed. Um, I thought you I said really... it was one of your favourite segments. <laughs> <laughs> and that just shows how much I think about the rest of the show. And uh, I, I realised you'd spoke to Zoe Diak. Oh, God. Zoe Diak, and I don't know if you know about this about Zoe Diak, apart from her uh, subtle breasts, is that she's she's oh, known she's known for killing people in car crashes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so That's I thought thing. I thought she was definitely guilty. The bitch. It's amazing she uh, roams free to this day. Uh, well, yeah, she's a tricky customer. Yeah, I, I really hope that yeah, you know, Zoe comes forward or you catch the bitch. It's one of the. One of the <laughs> Hashtag me too. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, uh, I guess we should probably have uh, a few moments silence for Connor because you know he was a yeah, he's a, a good guest. man. Uh, Joe, could you uh, could you put a picture of um, Connor on the screen, please? Hold on, if you look at that etch a sketch, it says having dick problems. <laughs> now I know Connor Spiracy didn't have a penis, but he spelt dick with a capital D. Well, I, no, hang on, dick always spy. A... No, oh, no, I'm not having a, this. That's dick is in your name. No, he, he, he respected his penis too much, so he gave it a couple to D. Conspiracy loves grammar. You are, you are bang to rights. Oh, That's why you're around his house. I see what got, this is. Got to, I, I've got to go now, boys. You've come on here to peddle your lies. No, <laughs> no, I swear. Yes, yes. <laughs> hold, hold on, Dick. Did, did Connor owe you money? Fine, I did it, but you'll never catch me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to laugh without lips. Oh, he's back. It's Max, really Max, heavy. Did you did you see uh did you see a man? Yeah, I saw I saw a guy walk out of a room. He he had he had his buttons weren't in the right holes for some reason. Um, <laughs> what a kooky he, character. Very yeah. kooky. Did he have kooky. any lips? <laughs> he's a murderer. He's not kooky. Yeah. We just Someone found out he murdered uh, last week's guest. He did what? He killed Connor Spiracy. Oh, you're kidding. He just admitted it live on air. It's one of my favourite character uh, people as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, it's just oh, such a way to go after that. Uh, oh, it's a shame. Dave, what's been pissing you off? Hey, days right. Days right. Gotta get those days right. Right. Um, so, I've gone for a bit of a change-up on Dave's raves. It's uh, oh, no longer oh, to, do with, something. Uh, to do with the uh, topic on hand. Uh, it's what's been going through my mind the, the, this week. First on topic, is aloe vera the brand or the thing? It's a plant. It's a plant. Ah. Yeah. Oh. An aloe vera so, plant. 
I didn't know that. I always thought it was like the like the act like uh, the product, like the product name, like for example, Nike. I thought aloe vera was the Ooh, okay. Or was there was a the product? There was a product, wasn't there? Let me aloe vera. carry on, Dave. Uh, up next, what is the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? The nose? Isn't the nose? Is it the nose? Different? I think so. I always thought because one of them, right? They've got they their legs are quite they can actually because one of them like crawl on the floor, don't they, with their chests like that? Yeah. Where the other ones, they have arms out a bit so they can walk. I thought maybe that was the difference. Is is a crocodile the one that's on the Lacoste logo? Exactly, that's what I mean. Is that yeah. an alligator or a crocodile? It's know, just one Dave. of those. It's been playing on my mind, and I, I don't like to research into things. So um, unless they're mm. conspiracies. Uh, up next on the agenda, what was it that meatloaf wouldn't do? Uh, uh, he would do anything. He would do anything. Oh. But I won't do that. But what? What won't he do? Oh. Well, that is the question. What is the thing mm. that he would not do for love? I smell a conspiracy. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. I thought it was like murder, but um, you'd have to, uh, like you murder someone for love, but... Uh, maybe I, next I week know. we can get Meatloaf on the show. No, and ask him maybe next week. <laughs> we've got, we've um, got so many questions to be answered here. You know, crocodile you know, alligators. Is... Yeah, I think, um, I think what you're referring to, Dave, uh, Purcell did an advert. Uh, back in 2000, and I think they brought out an aloe vera product. And I remember right. I was, I, I thought the same thing. They did like a, a an advert for it, and it was like aloe vera. David being five. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, but for years after, they, 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 yeah. Sounds like an old sitcom. Sitcom. Aloe vera. Aloe vera. It was a, it was a personal aloe thing. Aloe vera. How are you today? <laughs> God, Hello, I recognise that uh, voice. Also, <laughs> <laughs> He's back, get the <laughs> Um And I've got a little question, like uh, another question. Um, ten points to Gryffindor if yep. you can tell me what a cummerbund is. Isn't it? Oh, Matt, so, you should know this. What is what you wear a cummerbund? Is it part of a suit? Is something you wear around you? Um, it is. I always um, thought it was one of those cakes with icing and a cherry on top. I thought it was that, <laughs> well, that was a cumber band. It just sounds yeah, like, a sweet, like a bakewell it? tart. Are you thinking of? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was called a cumber band. You know, like the. This. It, was, uh, it, it shook me because it's, 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 it's pronounced a cumber band. Cumber ah. band, like a girdle, ah. no, not a girdle. Did you think it was a cumber bun and it was like a, a cake bun, like a cake? Yeah, yeah, that that's, that's exactly. Yeah, that's what I've been saying it wrong. That's why I thought I'd get you there. I'm like, this will fool them. Dave, fool uh, thank you very much for letting us know <laughs> what's in your mind. Uh, You're welcome. You've, you've got me with the crocodiles and alligators there. Right, I missed that one. What was it? I was looking. What's at... the difference between a crocodile and alligator? All oh, right. Okay. What? What? Uh, yeah. We'll have that for next week. Well, <laughs> thank you for Dave for uh, and you know. An intriguing Dave yeah. Raves. Did well you know what I mean? It made me think. Thank you very much. Cheers. It did. Let's get on to <laughs> okay, there you go. our final topic. Just put it to the max. Yeah. Hey. Put uh, it to the a max. reminder, it is put it to the max at hotmail.com. Yeah. Right then, uh, we have one here from a gentleman that would like to be anonymous. Um, so, love the podcast. Watching from Derry. Keep up the good work, lads. Oh, My problem is that in September, I'll be going into sixth form. I have a great group of friends, however, I live quite far away from them, which makes it difficult to do things outside of school. There is a school close to me with people who live in my area. I'm not sure whether or not I should consider moving. I know Matt's moved around a lot when he was younger, so I'd like his advice. Thanks. So, Derry, the, the, the thing that was easy for me is that I didn't have a lot of friends, so yeah. <laughs> leaving them wasn't that much of an issue. Um, mm. But I think, I think today, um, in this day and age, there's so much like technology wise, you can always stay in contact with people. Um, yeah. So well, you're always going to, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you're not going to have an issue keeping in contact with them. If that's what you're worried about. Uh, if you're, a, I'm sure you you're a good enough lad. You can make new friends. I went to a different college to the one that, so my school, pretty much everyone went to, anyone who went on to college went to the same college. Um, I went to one, uh, I, I did go to that originally, didn't enjoy it, and um, spent some t spent a year out, and then I went back to a different one, and it was amazing. Uh, it's just uh, 
it's a good chance to. It's just the luck of the draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. luck of the draw you get stuck with. Um, it's just it's something new, isn't it? I think if if yeah. you're a bit scared of doing something, the chance you know things that you should do the things that you're afraid of because uh, they're they're exciting. Makes you a better person. As exactly. Well. You know. I met my girlfriend uh, at a different sixth form to where all my mates went. Meet meet new people. That's the yeah. best broaden thing, your best horizon thing to do. We have one here from um, Denish. Says, "Hey guys, looking for advice on how to go on with this situation." So, I've liked this girl for around six months. I'd say we're pretty close now, but she isn't aware that I like her. Have you two meters apart? <laughs> I found out the other day that she's now with some other guy that tends to make his way to a large amount of girls. I'm really into this girl, and I think I should probably leave it there and move forward. But I'm struggling to not respond when she messages me. I know when this guy breaks up with her, she'll come to me. She talks about him a lot, and I don't enjoy hearing about him. Do I stop talking to the girl or continue as a friend? If it means anything, I've been the go-to when this guy is, is asleep or isn't talking to her. Cheers for any advice. Um, so, um, appreciated. Denise, it sounds like uh, being used here a bit. And you're, mm-hmm, you know, she's falling mm-hmm. back on you. Maybe, or change your advice if she goes on about this guy and his faults. Just say, you know, what? Why are you? Why are you bothering with him if he's not giving you the time yeah. of day or the respect? Joe, you know, just if she keeps on doing that, then you know she's clearly got a, a bad taste in men. Um, Max. Uh, life's too short to hear about problems about people you don't care about so just bin it off do you know what Denise is what, like, she might like you but you know people people are attracted to confidence you've got, you've got to say how you feel and then you know put it out there and if, she, if she's not interested move on that's the only way you know but she might be waiting for you to step up she might want to you know if, if you're happy just kind of being in the background and being a friend then maybe she thinks you're not interested Sounds like she's using you just for like a like a safety net, if you know, yeah, if you will. Re- if that makes she wants sense. Wants reassurance and yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and if 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 she's texting another boy while she's with this lad, what's to say the same if you got together? She won't be yeah. doing the same thing. Yeah. Well, she might like you. So this is very just. just <laughs> I've made a whilst, whilst all this is true, <laughs> you'll find out. Like, you'll find out if this is true very quickly if you say how you, you feel, and she's like. Oh, you know, but I see you as such a good friend. She's not interested. She just she's using you to just you know just, make herself feel better and to vent to. Put it out there, and then you know where you stand, and then you know where to go. Just give oh, her really job. shit advice. Well yeah. said. <laughs> she also <laughs> help. Just say something outrageous. You know, shit in a bag and post it. Yeah, in exactly. Box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, have we solved all the problems? Yeah, uh, we got one more. Um, thank you very much for two. Conspiracy Theory Podcast. Yep. We've covered so much from Shakespeare to Shaka time Shakespeare. travel. Time travel. I forgot what we did last week. Yeah. Um, but thank you very much life. for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to do another one in the future, we will. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been joined by Thomas Cooney. Fabian Reese. Thank you. Thank you. Max Smith. Thank you. Uh, and of course, please, free Joe McGrath. And uh, rest in peace, conspiracy. Um, yeah, and uh, just remember, uh, just have to cover the postage. Oh, beer 52, yeah, well done. Yeah. I'm just about to make my order now. Hello, is that beer 52? Yes, I'd take 20. <laughs>